I'm sure many of you have been to a newly remodeled McDonald's, maybe possibly one with a McCafe. But have you ever looked up why they started remodeling the restaurants in the first place? I mean, the first McCafe in the, uh, in the States popped up in Chicago back in May of 2001. That was just the beginning. Now, over the last five years, McDonald's has taken to remodeling every single restaurant in America. Most of you might even be asking yourselves why or how it's been so long since you last stepped foot in an old McDonald's. I mean, ask anyone who's done some market research and you'll hear something strange. McDonald's loses money in the process. That's a fact. And the new, the new furniture isn't pulling new customers and the McCafes can't sell coffee that cheap and turn a profit. I mean, look at Starbucks prices. You'll see what I mean. Stakeholders say that they wanted a more adult vibe for the restaurant, a classier look for a classier America. Wrong answer. Google it right now. What's McDonald's target age group? It's children and teens. Always has been. So then why? Why do they start all those remodels? Why would one of the largest corporations in America spend over $1 billion on a terrible marketing strategy? Well, you see, that's where things get interesting. Let's start with the play places. If you can remember, almost no two play places at McDonald's were identical. Some of them were really fun. I know I had a few favorites. But some of them were also really dangerous. The first gem I could find was a carousel play place in Lancaster, Pennsylvania back in the 1980s, when they got shut down mere months after opening. Little information was given about why they closed. The lot's been vacant ever since. If you find the right connections in Lancaster, though, you might, might be able to read an article that didn't make it to print. Children would play on the merry-go-round in ways that they weren't supposed to. See, they're kids, so of course they would. Well, one day, a few kids managed to crawl underneath the thing, but then they never made it back out. The whole incident was so heavily guarded by McDonald's PR that you'd have trouble finding a single person that was ever there that whole afternoon. The only witness anyone could find has this to say. When they went under, a few parents started calling for help. Then, something happened to the lights. The carousel kept getting brighter and the music was deafening. I ran out of the building when the machine started to smoke, but I looked back through the window to see if the kids were all right and the employees were just standing there behind the registers. They looked like they were still waiting for customers. Weirder and weirder stories pick up from there throughout the years. Reports of children sinking into ball pits that should have been one foot deep. Mothers searching play tubes for their kids, only to find a lonely pair of shoes. But the play places held a mere fraction of the incidents. Back in 1996 in Knoxville, Tennessee, there was a businessman of his 40s who went into a McDonald's restroom and remained there for several hours. Patrons noted that he refused to leave the furthest back stall. The police were finally called and they managed to break down the door. He was restrained by paramedics as he wouldn't willingly leave the restroom. As they pulled him out of the stall, he began screaming bloody murder. Take me back. I want to go back. But the moment he exited the restaurant, he passed out. He had no memory of ever going to a McDonald's the day of the incident. The restaurant was shut down before anyone could inspect the stall that he had shut himself in. However, anyone who used the restroom that day mentioned hearing several voices whispering things like it wasn't him. We have to go back. Saw you smile. Then there was a fry cook somewhere in Vermont back in 1999 who walked into the middle of the restaurant and dumped scalding oil on himself without flinching or saying a word. Several of the customers started to laugh and roll around in the burning oil alongside him and were rushed to the hospital. Only one survived, but refused to make a statement. Not that she easily could. Her throat melted all the way through and had to be completely restructured. The manager claimed he didn't remember ever hiring the fry cook and that he wasn't in any official paperwork. His name tag didn't even have a name, just hashtags written on it. Once again, the McDonald's was closed without a trace. Most of the stories sounded like urban legends to me, but it never failed. Whenever I found a story, a McDonald's had been shut down in its wake. Near the late 2000s, the number of cover-ups had been so frequent that McDonald's decided to shut all of them down and rebuild. Every single one. But of course, they'd miss a few. I needed to see one for myself. I remember going in the old McDonald's as a kid, but that was before the frequency of the incidents. That was when it was still safe. There was a small town on the way to my parents' house just off the highway. Orozca was its name. Maybe a hundred residents. 
completely untouched by the outside world, practically forgotten. It was pointless to stop there for any normal reason because there wasn't a gas station or a rest stop, not even a sign to let you know that you were close. Let's just say I had to sneak my way around some very old building permits to discover that they had one of the few McDonald's, aside from some treasured landmarks, that has yet to go through a remodel since the 1970s. How lucky is that? I was surprised they even had a fast food place, yet they didn't have a market or a post office. I planned a trip to my parents' place for the weekend, with a stop at Orozca on the way. It was already dark outside since it was the dead of winter, and I didn't get off till five. I was cold and grumpy about driving at night, but mostly determined. I don't think I ever would have found the place before the phone GPS. The turnoff from the highway was just a dirt road with no landmarks or anything. As I pulled into the town, none of the houses had lights on. Most of the street lights were out as well, as if nobody had remembered to change the light bulbs in years. This place really was untouched. I'd be surprised if most of the residents had moved out or simply died off. It definitely had the markings of a ghost town anyway. I was about to lose hope when I finally saw it. The nauseous yellow light of those golden arches illuminating a vacant parking lot in the distance. It buzzed and flickered like a fly zapper running out of batteries. The sign below said, Eat New Eggs McUffin. We like to saw you smile which I assumed was just a lazy teen's handiwork. I pulled into the lot and carelessly parked my car in the center. There's nobody else there anyway. When I stepped out of my car, I felt a squish under my foot. It was a burger covered in mold with a rancid liquid oozing out. The smell was absolutely vomit-worthy. I jumped out to scrape the contents of the burger from my shoe when I noticed the whole parking lot was covered in trash. There were half-eaten boxes of fries and sun-baked children's toys spilling out of old, greased-up McDonald's bags. Everything was mixed with the dirt and snow like it had been there for months, possibly years. I hurried across the lot to avoid retching all over the asphalt. As I approached the door, I noticed the windows were caked in dust. Somebody had taped a piece of paper over the door with the words closed, scribbled across it in red marker, yet the sign hung from the inside, clearly saying open. Cautiously, I approached the door and pushed. An artificial bell hummed in an old McDonald's tune that fizzled out on the last few notes as the door creaked open. I looked around the fluorescent lit room and saw it was void of life. There was nobody sitting at any of the tables, nobody attending the registers. Someone had left a tray on one of the tables in the back, but there was no other sign someone had been there. The inside was at least a little cleaner. Toys on display by the counter were of children, of characters that I'd never heard of likely from before my time. The whole place was covered in faded coats of yellow and red paint, and all the tables had the classic McDonald's wood finish. The wood looked completely rotten, but slathered with coats of polish as a sad attempt to keep it looking new. All of it had a sort of green hue, which I contributed to the old lights. The most noticeable element, though, was a terrible burning plastic smell that stung my nose. I went up to the register. I felt like I shouldn't order anything, but I was hoping maybe... I could ask someone a few questions. I waited for a good 15 minutes in silence. I shouted hello with only a muted echo for a response. I had been to a few McDonald's with bad service in the past, but this was insane. With how dirty the whole place was, I should have expected as much. Just as I was about to turn around and give up, the cash register popped open. It was practically begging me to take a tip for myself. And besides, didn't I deserve a slight reward for wasting my time here? So I casually walked over to it and I saw at least a dozen 20s stacked high. Looking around to make sure nobody was watching, I, I reached in to take a few bills when the thing suddenly snapped closed right on my fingers. The metal dug deep into my flesh, leaving a dark trail of blood down the side of the counter. I yelped in pain, and behind the counter at the other end of the grill was a first aid kit hanging on the wall. The lights were burned out in the kitchen area, but I needed a bandage pronto. I hopped over the table, I made my way to the back, and the burning smell was getting stronger as I walked. I noticed the grill was covered in a thick layer of grease, completely unsuitable for cooking. I passed by the frying station and the oil was filled to the top with, with maggots. I quickened my walk to the first aid, hoping that I'd get patched up and out of there as soon as possible. I started to realize this restaurant was definitely not open for business anymore. Probably shouldn't have entered in the first place. I opened up the first aid kit and had to swallow that vomit. A cloud of mold burst out from it in every direction, followed by that same bubbling black ooze that was on the burger outside. I started coughing and waving my hand in the air to clear the mold dust floating around. The same bell I heard playing at that McDonald's tune started up again as I steadied myself. 
I assumed it was broken like the rest of this dump. I looked back towards the counter and noticed everything seemed farther away. I must have been disoriented from losing blood and that awful smell. I, I looked down at my hand to see how bad the wound was and my... My eyes widened. There wasn't any wound on my hand at all. I rushed back towards the counter in a panic when something under the stove caught my foot and I fell. In the darkness, my eyes started to adjust and I saw the outline of a body. Someone was under there. Maybe... Maybe they were unconscious. They, maybe they needed help. I yanked at the person's arm and a half-decayed body slid out across the floor. They, they were wearing McDonald's employee shirts with a name tag that just read the hashtags off. Their mouth was contorted into a sickening grin, but their eyes, their eyes were screaming. I, I tried to shout, but no sound came out. Like when they tried to wake up from a nightmare, as I, as I scrambled to get back up to the counter, the light started to dim and the McDonald's tune got louder. The notes fizzled and distorted as they were playing. And once I had gotten my grip above the counter, I froze. Since entering, I never looked at the side of the restaurant opposite the counter. There was a play place. The glass separating the main restaurant from the play area had hundreds of bloody handprints smeared down towards the floor. The, the tube slide was caved in with chunks of red liquid squirting out from the tiny holes left at the bottom. The, there were rows of nooses tied to the monkey bars in the corner with employees wearing that same hashtag name tag hanging from them. The tables around the perimeter had skeletons with rotting food left in the trays, some of the food hanging from the skull's mouths, and I looked on in horror, too shocked to move. While the rest of the restaurant went dark, a bulb in the center of the play place continued to glow like a, like a carnival spotlight, and below it, a massive ball pit, barely able to contain all of its colored plastic balls. It was smoking under the blaring white light, making that awful, burning plastic smell. The balls began to rattle and fall off the edge when something inside started shuffling around. I wanted to run so badly, but my body refused, and then suddenly, suddenly the music went dead and the movement stopped. A yellow glove slowly crept upward from the ball pit, writhing its fingers as it went. A connected red and white sleeve came after it, slowly alternating in colors as they appeared from underneath. The arm continued to reach towards the sky, growing more and more while its joints popped and cracked like breaking branches. By the end, that arm had to be at least six feet long. It finally reached for the light bulb on the ceiling with its gangly gloved fingers and began to twist it loose. I broke into a sprint, jumping over the counter and toppling chairs as I went. That last light went out just as I got to the exit. I bashed through the door, breaking the glass in the process. As I rolled into the parking lot, I heard a distant scream. And then something whispered right next to my ear in dead silence. It had that same tinny distortion as the McDonald's tune. Come back. I want to see you smile. I, um... I haven't told anyone about what happened there that night. There was an article online saying Orozco burned to the ground a few days later. I don't know if it was a cover-up or something else, but, um... I'm never going back to find out. So I didn't share this because I want you to get involved, by the way. I shared it to warn you what happens when you do. You can go to a new McDonald's, you know, keep your, keep getting your Big Macs, keep getting your McAfee coffees. That's fine. They did something to, to the remodels. They made them safe, at least for now. But don't ever go into an old McDonald's. Not even the drive through Okay, I've, I've got to stop now. I need to get the pain meds. My jaw hurts. That, the hand that I snapped in the register is getting so itchy. Hey there, kids, it's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and welcome to the new decade of 2020, which means that the channel, I think at some point, actually, in, uh, at some point this month, I believe, either this month or next, the channel officially turns nine years old, which is pretty incredible. It means uh, there's almost been a decade of MCP. Uh, so, thank you guys so much for watching or listening, if you're listening to this on the podcast, available on Spotify and on Apple and on SoundCloud and on Google or wherever you get your podcasts from. Or, if you're listening on the podcast, then thank you for watching on YouTube and subscribing to Mr. Creepypasta. And a very big thank you to my patrons from patreon.com slash Mr. Creepypasta, such as Dr. Strawberry, Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Chumpinski. Brianna Ventine Jensen, Stephanie Van Huss, Tristan Pelton, G Weevil 3, Diane Krauss, Asia, The Red Oak Shield Virus, Sandy Barney, Nico Kyle, Caleb Dugall, Daniel Polson, Dante Rao, The Last Blade Song, The Ginger Bros, Don Mewmeister, Eliminator 86, Nebsky, Sky Harbor, 
Finlay, Steampunk Center, Rafael Rodriguez, and Optimistic Avocado. You guys are the MVPs and everybody down there in the description. A big thank you to you guys as well. If anyone listening likes warm tea while you listen to scary stories or to help you fall asleep, all of you insomniacs there in the live stream, then I strongly suggest you check out my wife's tea shop at etsy.com slash shop slash ivory monocle tea. And to follow me more on your phone, you can check out Pop Base. It's a new mobile game and you can find the link to it in the description down below. Visit my place, do some quizzes of cursed knowledge and the like. Sweet dreams, everybody.